Hi, I'm Mitz, a uh, second year infectious disease fellow. So I'm going to talk about culture negative endocarditis tonight. I'm glad to have this talk, opportunity about this talk earlier this year, since I've been linked to stool transplant for a year. When I Google my name, my name pop up with stool transplant. <laughs> So this time, that's why I asked Dr. Ella how long does it take to upload this lecture in the USF podcast. That, there's nothing wrong with that. That's awesome. Right. Unfortunately, Sugania will be linked to Parasite for a year. <laughs> you guys need to be careful to choose topic. Yes. Especially you're looking for a boyfriend or a girlfriend. <laughs> anyway, I've decided to choose non-stool related topic this time. <laughs> After I've decided the topic, I had this case. 33-year-old veterinarian female with past medical history of mitral valve replacement time three. And most recent one was four months prior to this hospitalization. And the first episode was MRSA endocarditis and secondary to IV drug use. Other two episodes were culture negative and she's reported some kind of immunodeficiency and she's getting IV, Ig month 3. Also she was diagnosed with bronchitis three weeks prior to this hospitalization and got levofloxacin from primary care doctor. She said she's allergic to vancomycin causing blister in the past and a social history she works as a veterinarian and takes care of cats dogs, and exotic pets, often has episodes of scratches and bites. As I mentioned about, uh, before, she has history of IV drug use. Right. A lot of like complicated history. As a physical exam, she does not have any stigmata of the infectious endocarditis, but repeated TEE in this hospitalization showed vegetation with mobile stalk. So this is what I felt. It is truly infectious endocarditis and what test do I need to order? And then which antibiotics should we choose for the treatment or for the culture negative endocarditis? And briefly I'm going to talk about the Duke criteria. Here is a major criteria it is originally reported 1994. A uh, major criteria at the time was persistently positive blood culture for organisms that are typical cause of endocarditis and vegetation on NECO. In 2000, as a modification, <coughs> they added the serological evidence of Coxilla bonetti. I will talk about the detail of the Coxilla bonetti later. And here is a typical pathogen of endocarditis, as we know, mainly gram-positive cocci, such as virulent strept, streptococcus gallicus, staph aureus enterococcus, and as a gram-negative, HESEC group. HESEC group is a major, major cause of the pathogen. Here is a minor criteria of the Duke uh, fever and then um, presence of predisposing factor, vascular phenomenon, immunologic phenomenon, and a positive blood culture that do not meet strict definition of major criteria. Also serological evidence except coxilla bonetti is minor criteria. And here is a definition of culture negative. So if we say culture negative, it's has to be like endocarditis without etiology following inoculation of three sets of blood culture after seven days of incubation on subculturing. I couldn't understand the terminology of subculturing and I asked Dr. Sandin. He said subculturing is draw blood through the blood culture bottle and they put on the plate to with before blood culture bottle gets positive to increase the detection rate. And the incidence of the culture negative endocarditis is 2 to 7 percent 
if the patient did not get antibiotics prior to the blood culture. If the patient get blood culture, if the patient get the antibiotics prior to the blood culture, the frequency of the culture negative is obviously higher. And here is uh, three major reasons of culture negative endocarditis. Previous use of antibiotics, inadequate microbiologic techniques such as small amount of the blood draw, an infection with highly fastidious bacteria or non-bacterial pathogens. Here is a different perspective and a risk factor. So for some reason, underlying valve disease, presence of pacemaker, and right-sided endocarditis tend to be culture negative as opposed to others, compared with others. And not only infectious cause, but also no infectious cause of endocarditis is reported. Uh, there is classified into the four category. One is neoplasm associated, autoimmune associated, and post valvular surgery associated, and miscellaneous. Neoplasm associated endocarditis is called marantic endocarditis. I've never heard of this terminology. But the marantic uh, stands for wasting away in Greek. So mainly related to cancer especially adenocalcinoma, most commonly in pancreatic cancer. Also other adenocalcinoma include lung, colon, ovary, biliary, and prostate, also cause marantic endocarditis. If the myxoma is small, it resembles vegetation as well. The well-known uh, cause of endocarditis related to autoimmune disease is Lipman Sachs. This is uh, uh, most well known, secondary to SLE. Not only SLE, but also other cause, other uh, rheumatologic disease, such as rheumatic heart disease, polyarthritis nodosa, and Besset disease cause non-infectious endocarditis as well. Interestingly, Valvular sur history of valvular surgery is a minor criteria of the Duke, but post-valvular surgery itself causes non-infectious endocarditis. I'm not s sure whether we should say it's endocarditis, but thrombus, stitches, and scars related to valvular surgery cause resembles vegetation on the echo. As a miscellaneous cause of non-infectious endocarditis, uh, eosinophilic heart disease. This disease mainly causes myocarditis instead of endocarditis, but it does cause endocarditis too, which is called Leffler endocarditis. Ruptured mitral cordy and myxomatous degeneration cause non-infectious endocarditis. And now I'm going to talk about the infectious endocarditis. So this is the main part of the, this talk. As a fastidious organism, there is a prospective study of 348 patients with su suspected culture negative endocarditis in France. They collected data from 1983 to 2001, and they checked serology of Coxella bonetti, Baltanella species, Chlamydia species, Legionella species, Aspergilla species. When valve specimens were available, they sent cultures, microscopic exam, and PCR. And this is a result. So as you can see, Coxella bonetti and Baltanella are the main cause of the fastidious organism related endocarditis. I just, this is, a, I think, the key finding. And in the same report, they mentioned 73 cases without etiology, 58 received antibiotics drug before blood culture. So antibiotics definitely affect the result of the blood culture result. This is reported in France, but there is some report comparing etiology. Most of them mentioned Coxella bonetti 
and Bartonella are the main cause of the fastidious organism. So now I'm going to talk about Coxella bonetti. Lily talked about a little bit in the previous talk of the zoonosis. So Q fever stands for query because they couldn't detect the pathogen at the beginning. It was originally reported in Queensland, Australia in 1935. Primary reservoir includes sheep, cattle, goats, dog, and cat. As a risk factor, pregnancy, immunosuppressed person, pre-existing heart valve defect. And here is the route of transmission. Aerosol is the most common uh, route of transmission of Coxella bonetti from the placenta of the animal, feces, urine, and milk. Direct contact, ingestion, and anthropod, vector bone. So if you guys were asked in the question, which pathogen transmits through aerosol, ingestion, direct contact, anthropod? That's Coxella bonetti. That, I think that's a bold question. And endocarditis is a major form of chronic disease occurring 50 to uh, 60 to 70 percent of all reported chronic disease. Chronic Q fever occurs less than 5 percent of acutely infected patients. Case fatality rate in untreated patients with endocarditis is 25 to 60 percent. And chronic endocarditis carditis may present soon within six weeks after an acute infection or may manifest years later. So Coxilla bonetti related endocarditis is chronic form, not acute. That is a key. And here is a geographic data of the Coxilla bonetti in the United States. So as we can see in Florida, it's very rare. 0.1 to 0.4 cases per million. It's rare. And here is a Q fever incidence in the United States. About 150 cases per year in the United States. And CDC collected data uh, from 2008 to 2010. This is acute and chronic. They didn't separate uh, prior to 2008. But most of the Q fever is acute, not chronic. 80 to 90 percent of Q fevers are acute and not chronic. I asked Dr. Montello and Dr. Green. Dr. Montero never see Q fever. Dr. Green saw one case with acute Q fever. So we might not see chronic Q fever manifested as endocarditis, but we need to remember Really? That is rare. And then diagnosis of the Q fever is confusing. Serologic tests evaluate antibodies to two distinct antigenic forms of Coxella bonetti called phase one and phase two. Acute Q fever is phase two is higher than the phase one. Lily already mentioned in the lecture, but phase two is higher than the phase one in acute Q fever. Greater than 200 for IgG and greater than 50 for IgM against phase two. So the diagnostic value of the chronic Q fever, phase one is higher than the phase two. As a Duke major criteria, they mention IgG titer greater than one to 800 against phase one are diagnostic diagnostic in endocarditis patient for chronic Q fever. Another way to diagnose chronic Q fever is culture, but it's very infectious. And it needs to be biosafety level three facility. Tampa General is biosafety level two, so we cannot perform this culture in our facility, but we can send out to other facility. This is obligate intracellular, gram-negative, pleomorphic bacteria, and needs cell culture or egg culture. 
And the last way to diagnose coccyla bonetti endocarditis is uh, histopathology. <coughs> and now I'm going to talk about Baltanella. Coccyla Baltanella is a major cause of fastidious organism of endocarditis. Compared with uh, Coccyla bonetti, Baltanella, about 25% have positive blood culture at some point. Diagnostic, diagnostic tool of the Baltanella are blood culture, pro, a positive serologic titer, characteristic worthy and starry stain of valve, positive PCR of the valve tissue. Due to the cross reaction of, with chlamydia species, low sensitivity and availability of the PCR based test, inclusion of these tests to the major criteria of the Duke is deferred. So some, there is some kind of problem of the serology PCR for the Baltanella. And here is a past slide of the Warsin Starry Silver Stain for the Baltanella. All these kind of black, black dot are Baltanella. And more than 95% of the cases have involved either Baltanella Quintana or Baltanella Hensilai. These are the two, basically, totally different, have totally different risk factor. Baltanella, Quintana, risk factor includes homelessness, alcoholism, and infection with body lice. Baltanella hensiri risk factor, as we all know, cat, and the previous valve disease. As a rare cause of the endocarditis is co coxilla bonetti, ah, uh, no, Trifrema whiplai, which is gram positive, past positive bacilli. Endocarditis secondary to Trifrema, Trifrema whiplai is described in small number of patients. And most of the cases, diagnosis has been made by exam of resected valve tissue. Here is a pathology slide of the Trifrema whiplai. It's a foamy macrophage, foamy macrophage with fibrosis. This is a buzzword for the board. Trifrema whiprise, also known to cause GI disease, and this is a past slide. Basically the same thing, foamy macrophage in the epithelium of the intestine. So if the valve uh, sent to the pathology department in TGH, we need to call pathology. Otherwise, they just do hematokicillin eosin. They don't do like silver stain or past stain. So we need to talk with pathologist and then ask them to perform the stain. HASIC organism used to traditionally so to be the most common culture negative endocarditis. Uh, which is Haemophilus, Axinobacillus, Cardiobacterium, Echinella, and Kingella. But the mean and median time to detection of HASIC isolates from blood culture are 3.4 and 3 days. So it grows pretty much quickly. And none of the 407 blood culture in patients with suspected culture negative endocarditis grew HASIC for uh, or other bacteria with, ex with extended incubation of 10 to 14 days. So we might not need to call micro to keep blood culture bottle longer like than 14 days. Fungi is also known to cause uh, culture negative and carditis. The major cause of the fungus Infectious endocarditis are candida and aspergillus species. But usually blood culture positive for the candida infectious endocarditis. So the problem is aspergillus. So we need to send a valve specimen for the PCR of the aspergillus if we suspect aspergillus endocarditis. And I'm going to shift gears and then talk about treatment guideline for the culture negative endocarditis. Selection of the most appropriate antibiotics for patients with culture negative endocarditis is difficult because it's guess. Empir we need to continue empiric treatment. 
there is a two category they mention in the guidelines. One is patient who received antibiotics before culture, and the patient who didn't receive antibiotics before blood culture. So category one is the patient who got antibiotics before blood culture. So as a native valve, uh, they recommend ampicillin slobactam plus gentamicin. And the prosthetic valve, vancomycin plus gentamicin plus cefepime and rifampin. Pretty much long duration. So I thought it's interesting. The whole idea is do not treat zebra from the beginning if the patient got antibiotics already. Because coxella and Baltanella is a most common cause, but Dr. Montel never saw the case. <laughs> to put antibiotics treating coxella, I think it's wise to do that. Okay, Dr. Ella saw one case. Endocarditis, yes. not acute Q fever. Um, no, it was, it was um, acute Q fever. Acute Q fever. So category two is if the patient did not get antibiotics before blood culture, it depends on the suspicion. So if the suspected Baltanella case and culture negatives, they recommend ceftriaxone plus gentamicin plus with or without doxycycline. If it's documented Baltanella, culture positive, they recommend doxycycline plus gentamicin. In the guidelines, they didn't talk about coxilla bonetti treatment for some reason. So I just looked CDC guideline. They mentioned it's doxycycline plus hydroxychloroquine 1.5 years to 3 years. Pretty long duration. It's very difficult to treat. Yes. <laughs> I think that's not the answer though. <laughs> yes. But that mention, no, I'll talk about it later. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here is a treatment regimen for HASIC group in the IDSA guideline. Both native, native valve and prosthetic valve, ceftriaxin or ampicillin subactam. If the patient is allergic to beta-lactam, ciprofloxacin is alternative. So as a summary of my talk, keep in mind that there is a possibility of non-infectious endocarditis. Coxella bonetti Altanella species as a most common cause of fastidious organism. And treatment regimen recommended in guideline is different. Whether the patient gets antibiotics prior to blood culture or not. And discuss make sure to discuss with pathologist if the patient is going to have valve replacement. Thank you. <laughs>